Welcome back everyone, where now we are going to learn how to implement API key-based authentication. Now we already did an explanatory video about what is API key-based authentication. You should see the description or the link of that video in the description box below. I suggest you watch that. Also, we have already covered basic authentication in ASP.NET Core Web API. I suggest you also watch that before we actually start implementing the API key authentication. Okay, so for now, all those who have already watched my previous video on this authentication mechanisms in ASP.NET Web API, you guys should be familiar with this solution. We'll do a quick recap on what we did the previous time. So we implemented the basic authentication in ASP.NET Web APIs. We made this basic authentication handler and we made a provision for verifying the username and password. Then in the program.cs class, we added a security definition and a security requirement for, for the swagger to pick up the authentication mechanism okay and then we also did a quick testing of this basic authentication handler. So this solution is already present on the github repo and we are going to continue the API key authentication from here again and even if you want to just watch the API key based authentication that should not be a problem you should be able to pick it up so continue watching and let's get started so we made this folder over here called auth handler so inside the same folder we are going to add our API key based authentication middleware or another handler maybe so let's add a new class over here for that matter So let's just call it API key handler. Let's add this class. So we have got this new class API key handler. Let's make a constructor again, CTOR and then double tab and you should get a constructor. Inside that constructor, add one thing that is a request delegate. And let's call it next. Okay, so what is a request delegate? So we all know that delegate is a function pointer. In our case, a request delegate it should tell us what shall be the next step that this authentication after it has done it should be calling what shall be that next step that it should call okay so if you want a particular video on the request delegate or on the delegate only just comment in this video delegate and i'll make a new video for that specifically targeting delegate what are delegates in c sharp delegates are actually pretty easy just don't worry about that let's continue with this video so now let's make a private read only variable of type request delegate and let's call it the underscore next also if you recall that video about uh, where i was explaining the api based authentication uh, you would recall that we were passing a header into the request headers we were passing our own header okay so we need a new header over here. So let's call that header variable uh, API key header name and give it a value of X API key. Next thing we would need is the actual API key value against which uh, we'll be validating things. We'll be actually validating the authenticity of the user or of the call or of the request. So for now, let's make it Let's keep the value as my decred API key. Now this will this you should actually replace with your actual API key. So let me add a comment replace with your actual API key. This next should be equal to the next that comes in from the dependency injection. So now very similar to what we added in the basic auth, auth handler, there was an invoke method over here or handle auth, handle authentication async. Very similar to this method, we'll be adding a new method over here and let's just call it, let's just call it invoke. And, we, and let's make it async because it is returning a task. And this will take in an HTTP context. Okay. So let's make it public. Async. Okay, let's start with the body. Okay, so we know that this HTTP context will contain a request and inside that request, our headers will be present, right? And that header will contain the API key that we have set in our request. So let's try to capture that over here. And how do we capture that? So we'll take the context, we'll get the request out of it. Then we'll try to get the headers out of it. And then we'll try to get API key header. So this is our header's name. So let's try to get this and then let's make an out var and our actual API key. Let's call it actual 
API key or uh, maybe let's let's call it the extracted API key that sounds better right okay so this should give us the API key now API key is a string so if I just quickly see if I'm doing it right uh, so okay so it is a try thing so it is a try method try get value so that will return a bool so instead of doing a was let's do an if condition so if I get my key or rather let's negate it and say if I don't get my key then that means the uh, user is not authorized or that request is not authorized in this in this context over here so let's call the context let's use a context again capture the response and the status code let's set it to 4 not 1 so that stands for unauthorized okay cool next thing also if that is the case let's also write in the response this request that you made there the api key is missing context.response.write is sync and let's just say that api key is missing and then just let's just return what else what else could be a possible scenario also there is a key present but that is not the key that we have specified or that we accept that is someone has made a request but inside the api key header uh, he or she is setting a different api key that would also be a chance right that he is actually not permitted to use it so the if the api key equals extracted api key right so if those are not equal then that means so let's copy this entire thing and we'll modify a few things over there let's paste them and that means he is not authorized he is actually forbidden okay and the api key is not missing but instead it is an invalid api key and then just return and now let's now because let me do something and then i'll explain you call the next middleware okay now what is this actually so you see this basic authentication that we did earlier this basic authentication was coming up from the microsoft's built-in mechanism so we were using that authorized attribute right so microsoft has built in this basic authentication into its system so the pipeline identifies so that basic authentication that we did earlier that was a built-in authentication scheme so we were using the we, we were also using the authorized attribute in our controller if you can recall okay so api key based authentication this is not built in from the microsoft system okay we added our own middleware this is a piece of middleware that we just added okay we'll be going forward and we'll be adding it into the pipeline also so this is a this api key handler is a piece of middleware now what is a middleware in asp.net code so middleware is nothing but just uh, is a software that's assembled into an app pipeline to handle the request and response so every time you make a request there is a sequence of steps that happen is actually being called middleware over here so now you have added a piece into your middleware so once you are done executing this invoke async method you will tell okay now you go ahead and execute the next step in the pipeline that is it okay make sense everyone if there's some problem you feel just comment your question okay and i'll try to be as detailed and as to the point in my answer to query your question okay cool let's go ahead so now we are now going to tell the system that okay uh, this thing is done now you go and execute the next step in the pipeline now because this is a piece of middleware api key handle is a piece of middleware that we have built we will have to add this middleware to the pipeline so how do we do that now okay so well, let's come to this program.cs class over here we see this uh, the builder.build method that essentially builds the application or builds the solution for us and after that we are uh, adding this swagger component over here we will again be testing this with the swagger so once the swagger is up we want the swagger should then land into our middleware to authorize the request so after this we'll be adding app dot use middleware okay so now there are two methods over here one takes in this parameter so we'll be using this let me just remove this breakpoint and the class name is api key handler and that is it okay so now we build a piece of middleware that will handle the api key authentication for us and then we added it into our pipeline okay cool so far so good okay 
Now, if you remember, in order to use these things or the API authentication mechanism into Swagger, we added this security and we added this security definition and the security requirement. Uh, so we'll be again needing this, but with a few changes. Now let's understand what those changes shall be. Okay. So over here, uh, when it was the basic authentication, we used a security scheme type to be an HTTP type. Uh, so now over here, it should change to the API key. Okay. And let's change the name also to not basic, but let's change to API key. So you can give whatever name you want over here. Okay. And let's change this also to our headers name rather. So when you actually use it, it makes a little sense on, you know, on the swagger. Okay. okay. So the scheme also we can change API key scheme. Okay. And then yes, the location has to be header. This thing will be provided into the header. So let it be that only. Uh, yes, of course we can change the description also. Let's change it to API key access the endpoint. Okay. So if you want, you can also specify an example. Okay. Uh, that it should be of this format. Okay, what else? Now in this security requirement also, we have got this type, let it be that, but this name has to change, it has to be this thing. Okay, nice. So I think we are kind of ready. Let's try this. It should work, I think. Okay, so let's add a breakpoint to this and then let's add a breakpoint to the get method. Okay, it's there. Okay, cool. Let's run the application and see what happens. Okay, so Swagger is up. Let us, uh, okay, so the, uh, if you recall, we we added that to get this authorized thing. And yes, it is saying the API key needs, you need the API key to access the endpoint. This is the example. Location will be header and this is the name. So let's enter that, my API key. Let's hit authorize. Let's close this and let's try now to get or execute this weather forecast API and it should first hit our API key authentication middleware. Okay, so we have come inside this invoke async. Cool. Let's go further and see if we are able to get the headers over here. Let's see. There are 14 headers. One of that should be X API key. Yes, it is there. X API key and this is the key that I passed. Cool. So I believe our authentication should happen fine over here. Okay, so it says API key is not equal to this. Okay, so API key that we entered is my secret API key. And so what we entered was the my API key. However, API key is my secret API key. Okay, so I should have entered that. So it should fail. Nevertheless, we'll again be able to test that we get the response code of 403. Let's hit continue. Let's go back. And yes, we get that. We also get this invalid API key message. Cool. So, uh, looks like it is working. Now, let's cancel this and let's try to authorize again. We we'll log out and then this time we'll copy the key from there. So, this is my key that should work. Let's go back. Authorize again. Close. And now it should work. So, yes, it works. If you see here, if you look at the headers here, you see that X API key is the header name and it is having the correct value my secret API key. So this is working. Now let's stop the solution and there should be a few more changes to the program.cs and to the forecast controller. So you see we when we did this basic authentication, we added this authentication scheme over here. So we'll have to remove that first of all because we are not we are no more using this now. We are in fact using our new built-in, our new middleware that is the API key handler. And now because we are not using the built-in mechanism of uh, ASP.NET Core, that is the basic authentication, we also do not need this authorized attribute anymore. All right. Now if we run this application, we will see that as soon as we try to request an endpoint, we should we first land up on this API key handler. And after that, as soon as we are authenticated, 
we land up to the weather forecast controller. Let's see that in action. Okay, so the swagger gen has come up. Let's authorize our key. This was the key. Let's hit authorized. Let's close this. Let's try out the API and let's hit execute here. Yes, we come up over here. Let's see if it gets authenticated. Yes, it did. Let's hit continue and we come up to the get attribute over here. Okay. So this is it, I think, about the API key based authentication. Now, there's a very important interview question here over here that comes up. That is the, how do you actually handle the keys? Now, there are several endpoints that we have made. We are using just one, but in a real app application, there might be several other endpoints and there might be several other keys. So, how do you actually manage the keys? Now, let's say if the API key has changed. Now, you have made a new endpoint and you want to change the API key. You will have to, and if this is the same, you know, if you are still using it over here as a constant string, how do you actually change it in a running application? Either you stop your solution, right? So that incurs some downtime. Now, how do you actually fix that? So there are several questions about related to interview that might come up over here. So after this video, I'll make another video on that, on those interview questions about the API key authentication, and we'll cover all of those. Okay, this is it for API key based authentication, the implementation of that. And I suggest you please stay tuned to my channel to watch that the interview questions that may come up on the API key management. Thank you for watching this video.